seated. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the graduation ceremony of the Augusta Scoffier School of Culinary Arts. I'm Tracy Lorenz, Chief Executive Officer and President, and I'd like to welcome all of you today and the loved ones of our graduates. I know we have some local graduates, but I also know we have graduates that have traveled from very far. In fact, I've heard from Illinois, South Carolina, Carolina New York, um, and from other very large, uh, far places. I also want to extend a warm welcome. We are live streaming this today, and for those who are viewing this online with your loved ones, uh, we celebrate with you also. So now I would like you to actually rise again and enjoy a performance of the Star Spangled Banner by Daniel Parks. Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. For the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets rang the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Thank you, Daniel. Following such an inspiring performance, I would also like to take this moment to acknowledge any military personnel, veterans, and families in attendance here and virtually. We deeply appreciate your service to our country. So before we begin the festivities, I actually would like to explain why we have an empty chair on the stage, as you can see over there. For many organizations who honor Chef Augusta Scoffier, it is a ceremonial tradition to leave a chair empty to signify his presence. As a graduate of Augusta Scoffier School of Culinary Arts, you will proudly wear his name of the greatest chef in the culinary history, the Chef of Kings, the King of Chefs. In fact, I just attended an annual dinner which started in 1936, a year after Auguste passed away. There were only 100 seats at the table, 99 were invi invited, and then they kept the 100th seat for Augusta Scoffier at the head of the table. So today, we will carry on that tradition by leaving a chair empty for his presence and his namesake, Augusta Scoffier. So we hope for today is gonna to be one of the most memorable days of your lives, as well as for your loved ones, and we'll spend that time celebrating your successes, hard work, perseverance, and definitely some grit. Um, it has been a journey, I'm sure, for a lot of you, and I'm sure it's one that you'll never forget. We also recognize, though, that you have family, friends, loved ones who have been there supporting you along the way. So let's just take this moment, turn to them, offer them a nice gest gesture and a round of applause, and thank them for all the support that they've given you along this time. We definitely know it won't be the last time you'll have to thank them. So without further ado, I'd like to have uh, well wishes to welcome the campus president, Kim Jensen. Good morning. I am truly honored to stand before you today to witness the culmination of such an incredible journey, and I'm pleased to carry on the tradition of excellence in culinary education. This is a very exciting moment and achievement for the candidates for graduation before us. Today, we are celebrating our culinary and pastry graduation candidates near and far as we are streaming our commencement ceremony live so that friends, family, and other loved ones can join in our celebration. I'd like to extend my appreciation to all of you who were instrumental in the education of today's candidates for graduation. 
the parents, family members, friends, loved ones, and faculty. To the faculty, you have dedicated yourself by investing time and effort into these students' success. You have shared your knowledge and experience and served as a guide on this new path. Today, we have a number of distinguished faculty members represented. Please stand to be recognized for your dedication to your art and the next generation in this career field. Thank you. Please be seated. To the parents, family members, and friends, you have made college an expectation and a possibility for these students and have made a remarkable contribution in their education. And most importantly, my congratulations to the graduate candidates. You have worked so hard to get to this point and are likely filled with excitement for what lies ahead as you enter into the culinary and hospitality field. Among the candidates sitting before us today is a select group of especially accomplished students. These students performed so well in both kitchen and classroom that they have earned the designation of honors and high honors graduates. These students are being recognized today with silver cords for honors and gold cords for highest honors. Additionally, there is a select group of students who demonstrated their commitment to their education by registering outstanding attendance throughout their program. These students are recognized today with burgundy cords. I would like to ask our honors, highest honors, and outstanding attendance designees to please stand for recognition. Thank you. Please be seated. It's a big group. Michel Escoffier, the great-grandson of our namesake, Auguste Escoffier, and president of the Auguste Escoffier Foundation and Museum, has prepared a special message for you. Hello, I'm Michel Escoffier. I would like to be one of the first to congratulate you on completing your program here at the Auguste Escoffier School of Culinary Arts. I hope that you enjoyed your time here and are able to walk away with confidence and a sense of accomplishment. More than anything, you should be excited to begin your culinary career. Being a graduate from this school, not only will you have the advantage of a diploma under your belt, but also, we have a lifelong commitment to supporting you with your job placement needs. I am excited for you. You should be excited as well. I wish my great-grandfather could be here today to see and congratulate you all. He would be very proud to see his legacy live on through each and every one of you. Congratulations once again and good luck. Great thoughts from a truly inspiring and accomplished individual who embodies the spirit and lineage of his great-grandfather. At this time, I would like to introduce our Chief Academic Officer, Chef Miles Mitchell, to introduce our keynote speaker. Thank you. Good morning, graduates. It's my pleasure to present Michael Pumpan as the 2019 commencement speaker. Chef Pumpan began his career at the Ritz-Carlton Laguna Niguel and has worked at the Renaissance Long Beach Hotel, the Ritz-Carlton Rancho Mirage, and the Coronado Island Marriott Resort and Spa. He is passionate about connecting to his community with a priority on children and improving the knowledge of nutrition. In 2010, he was invited to Washington, D.C. for a kickoff event with Michelle Obama for uh, Chefs Move Schools and looks forward to serving on several boards and committees for local Denver organizations. He currently works as executive chef of the Ritz-Carlton in Denver, where he is focused on local ingredient sourcing, seasonality, sustainable farm partners, and waste reduction, in addition to offering superlative food and service at Elway's downtown and throughout the hotel. Please welcome Chef Humpan. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. 
Thank you to the chefs and the staff of the Augusta Sophia School of the Culinary Arts for the opportunity to speak to the next generation of culinarians graduating today. We as culinarians all share a connection with Escoffier. One of Escoffier's greatest accomplishments in his time was turning our, what is our career into a professional and respected career by creating the brigade system, standardizing recipes, defining professionalism, and consistently demanding only the best of the people and the products that he worked with. He was able to transform what we do into an art and craft. As a chef for the Ritz-Carlton and Marriott for the past 15 years, there is not a day that goes by that I don't think about the start of it all between Augustus Couffier and Cesar Ritz many, many years ago. Together they defined luxury and they defined hospitality industry as we know it today. By individualizing service to the customers, they created a new level of service, setting the bar for many years to come that all of us honor. Today, all of you begin a life and a career. Many times as a chef, it's difficult to separate the two. As a cook, you're going to go into the kitchen, go with curiosity, go hungry, go hungry for food, go hungry for knowledge. I remember the first day I put on a chef coat and I went to work. I remember how nervous I was around and I looked around at the workplace. It was nothing like being in school. It was a much faster pace. Nothing was familiar. I had called Chef Christian Rasnu at the Ritz-Carlton Laguna Niguel, and I was asking for an internship. And what he told me was, I will let you work in the pool kitchen for the summer. And if you're still there at the end of the summer, the internship is yours, and you can work through all of the kitchens in the hotel. I couldn't have imagined what that kitchen would have, was like. Little did I know what it entailed. We did four to 500 covers a day with three cooks. Um, there was no air conditioning. The kitchen was far from the hotel's main kitchen, and we were out of prep halfway through the day every single day. I remember many times having a full board of tickets and watching more spit out from the printer onto the floor. And I also remember, though, that I was young, and I had this belief that anything could be possible. And what made it possible was how tightly knit the kitchen of the, the, the three cooks that worked there. We would have never let each other fail. The lead cook was a kitchen, was a woman named Charlie, and Charlie took me under her wing. She taught me every day to work faster, to be more efficient, and she definitely had no problem coaching me when I did something wrong. She was a true leader and set a strong foundation for the future of myself as a leader. At the end of the summer, I was still there. I made it to work. I made it throughout many of the kitchens throughout the hotel. And in each of the kitchens, I found over and over that the best cooks I worked with were the ones that were constantly sharing knowledge and teaching. They understood as a team that you are only as strong as a whole and that they had pride in their work and they were always willing to help others. And I took this for the rest of my career as something that I wanted to live and believe. But your story will be your own to tell one day, and it will be defined by the work and the effort that you put into it. Your goal as a cook is simple. Every day, you must be better than you were the day before. Unfortunately, I must tell you that the only way to truly accomplish this is to make a lot of mistakes. Like sending a whole party of steaks out underdone, forgetting that sauce you put on a couple hours of work into, and coming back to a bl black burn carbon mess. By the time you set a walk on fire, none of these are things that I've done, just some examples. <laughs> when these things go wrong, this is when you'll find the good in other people. You'll find the teachers and you'll find the mentors. Learn from what they tell you and watch them work and also learn from what they do. Practice the things that you are not good at until you are great at them. Step up to the challenges. Do what you think is you cannot until it is possible. Make no mistake, the work will be difficult, the days will be long and stressful, and many times you will want to quit. It is at these times you must remember what it means to be relentless and to be hopeful and to be optimistic and find what it truly means to be a cook and dig deep inside for that passion. 
Though this work you will grow from a cook to a chef partie to a sous chef to a head chef one day. Throughout this journey, take care of the next generation of that's coming after you. Remember how nervous you were that first day you put on the coat. Or how the first time you were in the weeds or the time you made all of those mistakes. The most joy I've ever found as a chef is the ability to mentor others and to teach. And I continue to find that joy and that teaching every day that I go to work, every opportunity that I get. As a chef, we must care about this world. We must care about everything that it gives to us. Every day we celebrate the farmers, the ranchers, the fishermen, and the artisans that bring these great ingredients to us. And it is our duty to make sure that these resources are available in our lifetime and for the next. Get to know, get to know the people who bring the ingredients to you. Ask them about what sustainability means to them. And when you learn about all the extra things that you do, they do to get these products there, you're going to want to cook them perfect every day. And in the, in the end, it is our role to take care of people. In the hospitality industry, it is, our, it is our job to take care of each other and take care of our customers. And at the Ritz-Carlton, we have a very famous motto that we are ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen. What this means is that our fellow employees count, us, count on us to work with respect for each other, to help others when they need it, and to truly care for each other. When we do this, we know it will result in multiple times to the guest experience and set a precedent for how we treat our customers, drive service, and create those indelible moments and experiences. And as cooks and chefs, you will surely shine as a single star but we will truly shine as community that work together to take care of each other. And as you step out of this auditorium and into your future, never forget what made you want to first cook, what made you want to put that coat on. Never forget how proud you were the first day you put that coat on, the first day you held that knife. And don't ever forget what it feels like to believe anything is possible and then to go and do it. Congratulations to all of you as graduates, and welcome to the community of cooks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maya. Next, we're gonna have uh, several students come up and speak to you. Uh, these students were selected by our chef instructors for exemplifying academic excellence and professionalism during their education at Escoffier. Our first speaker is representing the Culinary Fundamentals Program, and that's Tiffany Moore. Tiffany? What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun, or does it fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat, or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it sags like a heavy load, or does it explode? Langston Hughes, Harlem. That has been my favorite poem since I was six. We all have dreams, right? What happens to our dreams when we don't live them? We die inside. Not performing in your designated life path can shut down your total body. 22 veterans a day on average commit suicide. It has been a struggle to not become a part of that number. We let life, pain, and grief consume us. This is my third time attempting to complete culinary school. Strength starts in the mind. It is indeed a dream and a blessing that I am standing here before you today because at one point I was unable to walk due to an injury I sustained in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom in Kuwait. I still have paralyzing crisis episodes and I'm in pain immensely every day. The doctors have no clue how I'm walking. You are a resistant organism, one orthopedic spine surgeon said. I've had two cervical spine surgeries and have to have a third. I showed up for myself just like you showed up for yourself, and we have arrived at the finish line. We have pushed the limits of our mind to take the next step, securing our culinary education with the Gulf Escoffier School of Culinary Arts. 
One thing that has remained constant on my journey to completing culinary school is that I never gave up. Life showed up and tried to beat me down, and that's what life does sometimes. Only the strong survives. We are all organisms adapting to our crazy environment, and we have to stay mentally strong. Your mind is a terrible thing to waste, and we have gained so much knowledge by taking the next steps to becoming chefs. As future chefs, we owe it to our community, community to be knowledgeable of the food chain and have sustainable practices in whatever culinary field we venture into. My philosophy is, I am your connection from farm to table. Your palate is safe in my kitchen. Let me nourish you, feeding you life and electrifying your well-being. We owe it to our community to help educate and feed the next generation. Health is indeed wealth. Having a healthy mind is heaven on earth. When you're shopping for your items, think locally. When you're preparing your dishes, create them with love and good intentions because we are feeding life into people. You ever thought about that? You'll be feeding life into people and that will in kind help the next generation. Today is a new day for us, and we get to step out in the world and make a difference. You make a difference by introducing someone to a new vegetable, upgrading their taste buds, stimulating your local community by providing jobs and resourcing locally as much as possible. You're going to help someone eat healthy. You're going to speak life into yourself and your dishes as you creatively plate them. I charge you with this. Speak life into all that you do. If you stay mentally strong and mentally healthy, you can tackle any obstacle put in your way and defy odds unknown. Continue growing and learning and perfecting your craft. In a world where everyone wants to be a chef but no one wants to learn, stand out. Chef Kayoko Turner, Culinary Institute of America grad, whom I had the pleasure of externing under, always reminded me to remember the basics. Culinary fundamentals will never get old. To my mom, thank you for being my number one fan and first customer in all that I decide to do. To my son, you asked me a question in 2012 when I medically retired from the Army. Mom, why do they call you a chef when you haven't completed school? I'm here now, look at me. Reach for the star, baby boy. <laughs> Reach for the star, son. All that you want is attainable. Chef Donovan, you said some words that breathed life back into me. You told me about Chef Paul Prudhomme, who ran his New Orleans restaurant from a wheelchair. <sighs> After the doctors told me I was on my way to becoming a paraplegic in October, I saw my culinary dreams being crushed again. Thank you for that strength talk. Are you limited by your mind, or is your mind limitless, class of 2019? We made it. We are in the elite number of people who know that knowledge is indeed power. Soar as high as you want to go and create tasty and amazing creations. You got this, you did this, we did this. Congratulations. So I, I first met Tiffany last July, August, July. was, was it, it July? July or August. August of last year at our very first uh, farm to table event, which we had in Illinois. And uh, it's, it's such a pleasure to see you here today as a graduate. So congratulations. Thank you. And I just wanted to present you with this you. and say congrats. Thank you. Our next student speaker is a student of the Pastry Arts Diploma Program, Jason Bonham. Good morning, everyone. Um, I would like to start off by thanking the administrative staff, chef instructors, family, friends, and of course my classmates. Um, it is because of all of you, uh, with your support and guidance, that I am able to stand here today and start my road on my new journey and uh, to be able to stand here and represent the pastry class of 2018-2019. Um, my journey has taken two years to get here. 
Um, when I first started to enroll, it <clears throat> uh, I was told I was in an extremely unique situation. Uh, so unique that I would probably be 50 years old before I'd be able to be enrolled into this school. But due to the dedication of the staff and the chef instructors, uh, they made sure that I was able to be able to accomplish my dream. Um, I was assigned a guidance counselor who was a huge, amazing person and a huge motivator to help me to get to where I am now. I remember when we first talked, we spent two hours on the phone talking about life goals, favorite foods to eat, favorite uh, recipes to make. Uh, she said to me, Jason, the road you're going to take will be full of twists and turns. You're going to hear the words no and impossible thrown at you a hundred times. But you have to keep fighting. And I think that if you can make through this, that you will make a huge impact in the industry. These words were such a huge impact towards me that they're burnt into my memory. They got me through six months of <clears throat> excuse me. Got me through six months of juggling two jobs, school, impossible, what seemed like impossible finals, my externship, and now here I am standing in front of all of you on my road to make that impact. <clears throat> so graduates, I hope this story goes to show no matter how hard it is, no matter how far it seems out of reach and how many times you hear the word impossible, it is only true if you actually believe it. <clears throat> we are in a demanding industry. Our lifestyle is not easy. We are beat up, we are burnt, we have long hours, little sleep, and that's on an easy day. <laughs> but we have to remember the amazing people that led our way, that laid down the path, great bakers, amazing chefs. We are the future of the culinary world, and what an amazing time it is to be part of it. 20 years ago, artisan chefs were considered a dying breed, and this was a dying industry. Mass productions of unhealthy, flavorless food, over-sweetened desserts, and unhealthy fast food chains were booming. Our art was fading, but our culture survived. And like a phoenix, we rise from the ashes that tarnished our industry, and it's coming back stronger than ever. <clears throat> we are coming up with new flavor combinations. The farm-to-table industry is booming. The incredible cuisine techniques of molecular gastronomy, non-GMO foods, people are starting to remember where our food is coming from. Our generation of chefs and bakers are revamping the use of the plate. We are understanding that it can be a canvas of art and flavor. And I believe that if we all leave here today and remember why we chose this lifestyle, why we love this culture so much, that every one of us will be able to make the largest impact in this culinary industry. So, as I stand here, looking at my graduating class, and looking at the family and the friends that have supported you all to get you through here, I can't help but feel excited and where this industry will take us. The adventures for flavor, the risks that we will take to be a little bit different. As I end my speech, I feel that I should end it with a quote from a man that inspired me, and likely many in the culinary industry. He was ashamed of nothing, and how he portrayed the culinary world, even its dark side, made it seem beautiful. He left an impact on the people he met and inspired thousands he never knew. Anthony Bourdain said, travel isn't always pretty, it always is uncomfortable. Sometimes it hurts, and even breaks your heart, but that's okay. The journey changes you. It leaves marks on your memory, on your consciousness, and on your heart, on your body. You take something with you, and hopefully, you all leave something good behind. Graduates, I hope you have safe travels, many adventures, and I hope that your journey impacts everyone you meet. Congratulations to you all. It is truly an honor to be standing here today. Thank you.
Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jason. Great job. Congratulations. Thanks. Our final student speaker is Myson Hall, a student of the Associate of Occupational Studies program. Peace. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Myson Musa Clay Hall. I have been blessed with a beautifully large family that has loved and supported me my entire life, and because of this love, I'm able to be speaking with you all here today. For that, I want to say thank you. Um, I wanted to start my message off right by saying congratulations to all of my culinary peers sitting in front of me here today. I'm proud of your diligence and the work you put in genuinely never goes unnoticed. Um, to our culinary instructors, thank you very much for securing the grounds that you've laid through the many lessons that you've taught us. To the admins who genuinely helped, thank you. And to all the family and friends who are here today in support, I just want to say thank you. Um, when I was asked to speak for today, my mind immediately went back to the first week of school when I had told myself that I was, I was going to be speaking to you all here today. Um, to give you a, a glimpse of my culinary timeline, I have been passionately pursuing culinary arts for almost five years now. Going into Escoffier, I had all the basic techniques and knowledge of how both front of the house and back of the house work with a mentality that was ready to be remolded again for betterment. From October 1st, 2017, to October 21st, 2018, my days began at four in the morning in preparation for school that started at six, and I also started my first closing job at an Italian street food restaurant. My time was short as working in a storage container can be. Three months allowed me to see that upper, man excuse me, upper management needs to be secure. Um, my ability to line cook had begun, and my mind was on Michelin star restaurants. I had stopped working and had made my decision to go directly into the books still with the mindset of being a human sponge and learning the ins and outs of this industry. <clears throat> Over the span of that year, I went into the detailed aspects of the importance of a team and the people you share a kitchen with, my role as a leader, fine-tuning my cooking skills, motivation for life, self-care, how literally everything is connected, and what it is that I plan to do for the rest of my life. In that time, with the help from my family, I had set myself up to start my internship in Claremont for Anne France at a two-star two Michelin restaurant right after the year was up and the real test began. I attended classes for the first three weeks of my time there, and from this experience, it exposed me to the, the culture of the people, the food, and the environment. My last two days of those three weeks was my realization that this was something that, personally, I needed to work up to. I wasn't where I needed to be as a cook, and I wasn't where I needed to be as myself, as Myson. Humbling myself and coming back to the States, I had to remain on a path of graduating and figuring out where it was that I stood. With two and a half months left, I had staged jump from ramen to vegetarian and finally landed in a brewery located on a college campus surrounded by all three major sporting venues. This for me was my small baptism by fire into the industry and it also allowed me room to grow more into the person I needed to know. My point in sharing all of this is to point out that there is much more to all the things we do as cooks and chefs, but it's up to you to determine where you stand for yourself. For me, I found myself going far, but I didn't have all the necessary attributes to take me there. So I had to find myself, and I found out that I chose the life that I'm living. For this, I found that initiative and effort is key. You have to want to do better in order to be better. Time management and patience is a balancing act of learning how to hurry up and wait. Um, I, set my, I set the tone for my own day and who I am sets the standard or example for everyone around me. So I'm here now challenging you to find out exactly where it is you see yourself going and encourage, and, and encourage you to diligently pursue your path with the effort that will allow you to reach your full potential. As cooks, we are the servants of mankind. As chefs, we are the innovators of change. And we are the runners up for the change. Our industry is calling for chefs who understand the importance of self-care. Chefs who pay attention to personal and restaurant hygiene. Chefs who are bringing new waves and vibrations. And cooks who are bringing the constant heat and drive for reminiscent flavor at a decent price. This is my final call to those of you who came to share my passion for cooking and are sitting here today. I ask that you educate yourself and know your product. And once you've done so, share that knowledge with the people you love. Because at the end of it all, our happiness is what matters most. And the quickest way to any person's heart is through their stomach. Thank you.
Thank you, uh, thank you, Myson. Great job. Congratulations. Oh, don't lose that. <laughs> uh, now it's my pleasure to present the Pastry Arts Diploma candidates. Please stand and proceed to the stage. Pastry Arts Diploma candidates. Martina Nugent, Outstanding Attendant. Yesenia Negron, Honors. Amy Scott. Katie Swoboda, Honors. Tracy Thomas. Ashton Jungerman. Adriana Sanchez. Laurel Ann Hardy. Jacob Lowen. Darren Tanberg, Honors Outstanding Attendance. Sarah McMillan, Outstanding Attendance. Meredith Lanford, Honors. Sierra Bradley. Summer Gonzalez Ovid, Outstanding Attendance. Chris Fletcher, Outstanding Attendance. Griffin Rideout, Outstanding Attendance. Deolandra Perez, Outstanding Attendance. Kylie Henry, Honors Outstanding Attendance. Mashke Tuhak, Outstanding Attendance. Michaela Gale, Honors Outstanding Attendance. Lainey Matanis, Honors Outstanding Attendance. Aubrey Rabadou, Highest Honors Outstanding Attendance. Carly Denton, Outstanding Attendance. John McClenney, Outstanding Attendance. Jason Bonham.
Now it's my pleasure to present the Diploma in Professional Pastry Arts Program candidates for graduation. Candidates, please stand and proceed to the stage. Kimberly Brumba, highest honors. Sam Lindbergh, highest honors. Amber Davis, highest honors. Vanessa Aponte, honors. Jessica Naylor, highest honors. Victoria Pargas. Charles Welch, highest honors. Now I'd like to present the Culinary Fundamentals Program candidates for graduation. Candidates, please stand and proceed to the stage. Kenzie Myers. Kelly Wadley, highest honors. Chantrice Wilson. Maria Hurd. Laura Burris. Christy Medina, highest honors. Alicia Weiss, honors. Lori Ramsey Redden, highest honors. Angela Norton, highest honors. Rishan Davis, honors. Chad Conklin, highest honors. Jamie Villanueva. Angelita Chambers, highest honors. Byron Bolton. Jill Feljano, highest honors. Mona Aliter, highest honors.
Timothy Tomlinson, highest honors. Charles Carruthers, honors. Robert Cruz, highest honors. Barbara Charles, highest honors. Lisa Matoyer. Aquarian Thomas, highest honors. Lisa Meyer. Andy Norton Lacker, highest honors. Melissa Jones. Yvonne Ford, outstanding attendance. Austin Mankey, honors. Jennifer Riffenbury, highest honors. Patrice May, highest honors. Bascom Barnett the third, highest honors. Olympia King, honors. Adam Lemon. Danielle Zadie. Ayana Johnson. Kamisha Coleman, highest honors. Don Todman. Desmone Shern. <laughs> Joanna Bell, highest honors. <laughs> Janolius Cotton, highest honors. Brandy Sievers, highest honors. <laughs> Melissa Goleroy. <laughs> Matthew Wooten, highest honors. Roxanne Melville. (laughs) 
Refugio Rojas, Jr. Princess Hardnet, highest honors. Mikea Arthur, honors. Haven Cornbluth. Shavina Higgins. Dorothy Tiran. Paulette Neal, highest honors. Stacy Traver, highest honors. David Bunt, highest honors. Tristan Twitty, highest honors. Tiffany Moore. Now it's my pleasure to present the Culinary Arts Diploma candidates for graduations. Candidates, please stand and proceed to the podium. Daniela Phillips, highest honors, outstanding attendance. Gordon Mitchell Olds. Robert Wanders. Caitlin Lopez. And finally, I'd like to present the Associate of Occupational Studies degree in Culinary Arts candidates for graduation. Candidates, please stand and proceed to the stage. Rodrigo Chedad, outstanding attendance. <laughs> Gloria Perez, highest honors, outstanding attendance. Michael Kimball, highest honors, outstanding attendance. Matthew Arias. Highest honors. <laughs> Joseph Chavez.
Alyssa Dickerson. McCartney Coyle. Miller Jr. Outstanding attendance. Matthew Kronkis, honors. Eliza Weiss, honors outstanding attendance. Desmond Ledbetter, highest honors, outstanding attendance. <laughs> Brendan Deleen. <laughs> Joshua Harvest. William Gotch, honors outstanding attendance. Andrew Pikowski, outstanding attendance. Faith Marcelli. Mitch Wortman, outstanding attendance. Patrick Rios, outstanding attendance. Daniel Bowring, outstanding attendance. Dylan Peters. Taylor Mayo. Esteban Alejandro Carvantes. Teresa Fernandez. Chris Fletcher. Myson Hall, highest honor. Congratulations. We'd also like to take a moment right now to recognize all of the graduates uh, for this year, whether near or far. So if you can, please direct your attention to the screen and we'll see all of their names.
So I just, I just like to really offer a really heartfelt congratulations to all of the graduates that are here with us in the auditorium today, and also everyone that's participating right now from wherever you are in the world. Uh, uh, as you can see, if you didn't realize this already, uh, Escoffier uh, is the, uh, it's not only the future of culinary education in the United States, it's actually the present state of culinary education in the United States. Uh, Escoffier is the leader. And as you progress through the industry, you're going to be working in kitchens beside other Escoffier grads, because as you can tell, there's a ton of them out there already. Um, so, which is really, really exciting. Uh, at this time, I would like to, um, uh, President Jensen, I'd like to present to you the 2018 and 2019 Auguste Escoffier School of Culinary Arts candidates for graduation. Thank you. All right, candidates, please rise and place your chef toques on your heads. Upon the successful completion of all program requirements and upon the recommendation of the faculty and by the authority vested in me by the State of Colorado's Board of Private Occupational Schools, I confer upon each of you the Auguste Escoffier School Diploma, Certificate, and Degree and admit you to all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities to which you are entitled. Graduates, please be seated. This concludes our, our commencement ceremony. On behalf of the staff and faculty of Auguste Escoffier School of Culinary Arts, thank you all for coming and sharing this special day in the lives of our graduates. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating the 2018 and 2019 graduates of the Auguste Escoffier School of Culinary Arts. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. This concludes our event today.